Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers. Um, kung saan ho kayo ngayon um, nagjo-join sa iba't ibang parte ng mundo, welcome to Tayo, this program about us. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Hannah Zulueta. I am a sociologist. I'm currently based in Tokyo, Japan. So we have um, the first episode of Tayo, Confronting History, Deciding on Our Present. And let me introduce my co-host, Ms. Isabel De La Torre, who is joining us all the way from Seattle, USA. Hi! Opo, Ms. Magandang, magandang gabi o magandang umaga sa'yo, Hana. Kamusta? Yes, it's actually lunchtime here, so magandang hapon po. Tanghali. Tanghali. <laughs> uh, yep. Ayon, welcome to Tayo, ang kwentuhan tungkol sa atin. Story about us. Um, sa pinakauna pong episode na ito, pag-uusapan natin ang tungkol sa pag-confront o pagharap sa history at pagdesisyon sa ating ang as, at sa tungkol sa desisyon na gagawin natin in the next days. Uh, pag-uusapan po natin andito po si Lila um, tungkol sa um, yung ni-research niya tungkol sa human rights violations ng martial law uh, based ito sa paper na ginawa niya na Ima- the image that never left me. Tapos papasok din po si Donna Flynn um, tungkol sa pagtutol na kalimutan ang mga bayani tulad ni Evilio Javier. Tapos po papasok po si Professor um, Ramon Barbaza ng Ateneo. Uh, ang titulo po ng kanyang Pag- talk <laughs> ay ang um, from a history of violence to violence against history prospects and redemption tapos po um per- perhaps we could invite them to the studio along with our uh, studio guests hi Lila. Hello everybody. Magandang umaga po. Magandang hapon. Magandang gabi. Uh, it's so nice to be here. Thank you, Hana. Thank you, Ben. Hi, Momo. Hi, Donna. Hello. Hello sa lahat. Yeah. Hello. Uh, magandang umaga. Magandang gabi. Uh, hello, Hana, Isabel, Lila, Hi. and Momo or Professor, Professor Remen. Ayon, <laughs> <laughs> and we also have studio guests who will be joining us later. Sa ano sa open forum? Yes, yes. Um, um, our studio guests are actually based in Japan. Um, two from Tokyo and one from one who's based in Nagoya. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ayon, and live streaming ho tayo. Kung may tanong kayo, we hope to see your questions. <clears throat> pakisulat lang either sa page ko or sa ano overseas uh, page and global page nakalagay yon doon ayon okay so, so yes without further ado i would like to introduce our our guest and our speaker for this um, program so i would like to it's my honor to introduce um Lila Ramos Shahani. She is an expert and associate member of two international scientific committees of the International Council on Monuments and Sites, or ICOMOS, where she specializes in the interpretation and presentation of cultural heritage sites and intangible cultural heritage. In 2021, she was the advisor for the Philippine team in a South China Sea exercise jointly organized by the University of Washington, and the U.S. Army War College. Lila is the former Secretary General of the Philippine National Commission to UNESCO. As head of the agency, she and her team obtained four UNESCO designations for the country in intangible cultural heritage, memory of the world, and creative cities. Lila served in the Philippine government for 13 years, under the presidential administrations of Cory Aquino, Noinoy Aquino, and Rodrigo Duterte. 
However, in 2019, she chose to step down from her UNESCO position because of ethical concerns related to the policies and practices of the Duterte administration. So um, um, let us all welcome um, Lila Ramos Shahani. Hi, everybody. Um, it's nice to be here. Thank you for that intro, Hannah. Um, I've been invited to talk about um, this piece that I wrote. And actually, po, yung sinulat ko. You, Hannah, uh, sorry, Lila, you're muted. Hi, sorry, sorry. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, Gusto ko lang sanang sabihin na um, itong sinulat ko ngayon, um, matagal na matagal ko nang pinag-iisipan. Actually, um, 16 years old pa lang ako, medyo matanda na ako ngayon. Yung time na yun, 16 ako. And um, yung mother ko, makakilala ninyo si the late Senator Leticia Shahani, um, no time we on nagtatrabaho siya sa United Nations and dun kami nakatira sa Vienna sa Austria and yung school namin um very european british european french nothing about the third world nothing about asia africa so yung yung naging education namin Medyo in retrospect, um, na for frustrate ako. Pero ngayon, yung, yung history teacher ko, sabi niya, sige nga, aralin ninyo yung, ano, yung mga bansang pinanggalingan ninyo. So, ako, sabi ko, okay, so I'm gonna study the Philippines. Eh, nung time na yun, 83, um, you know, marami nang nangyayari sa Pilipinas. And that's when, I started to read all these different reports and marame, I mean, um, Amnesty International, uh, you know, Task Force Detainees of the Philippines, um, then different researchers. Tapos meron po akong nakitang isang photo. And yung photo na yun, um, it was isang mama na Merong nagmartilyo ng sa ulo niya. He had a nail in his head. And I, when I read the report, the report said that the man didn't die for several weeks. So he was alive. And I remember the, basta, you know, there's certain things in your life that you never forget. Like I forgot what I ate for dinner, but I never, never forgot that moment in the history class. I remember the time of day. I saw the image and I thought, well, you know, it began this whole lifelong odyssey into the question of evil and why do human beings commit gratuitous violence to each other? And I remember the photo Tapos hindi ko na mahanap-hanap yung report na kung saan ko siya na nabasa. So, fast forward, kasi madaming nangyari, but um, when Bongbong Marcos uh, was, uh, no, um, I should say that after college, I went to the Philippines and I worked in CCP and um, maraming this was after Marcos, during the core years. And there were many artists, writers, activists who were part of the cultural scene. At lahat sila, galit na galit sa akin nung una. So ako, dahil galing ako sa ibang bansa, sabi ko, ano kaya ang ginagawa ng ibang mga anak ng senador? Paano ba nila tinatrato ang mga tao dito that people are so scared of them? And little by little, over maybe 10, 20 years, many of the people who were a little resistant to me in the beginning became my very close friends. And paunti-unti, kunento nila sa akin kung paano sila na-incarcerate, 
yung mga nagahasa, yung mga na torture, um, at yung mga humiliation, daily humiliations nila. So, um, ako talagang hindi ko inexpect na uh, there would, the Marcoses would come back again to the Philippines. But in which respect, that's the hubris. That's the, the fatal flaw of the liberal. Is that parang, oh, nandito na tayo, okay na. Oh, good. Parang na tayo. When actually, you know, after Obama was Trump, you know, and that's just the cycle of history. And you must recognize the fragility of democracy and safeguard it um, and be vigilant at all times. But so, nung, nung, hindi, ko, hindi talaga ako makapaniwala because I've known Bong Bong since I was a child and I've known the family. And si Bong Bong is my third cousin. And as you know, uh, the Ramoses uh, went against the Marcoses, but we're all related. And uh, I must say na wala akong masabi. Imelda Marcos is an incredibly charming human being. And, you know, um, but Bong Bong himself has achieved very little as far as I could see. So um, I didn't expect it. But when I saw how popular they had been, and I remember even in 2010, already in YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, they were already beginning this strong media presence. And I knew that in Ilocos Norte, the, the fabrication, the, the, the fabrication and myth making was very strong, but in social media, it's been at least 12 years. So, nung nakita ko na baka mananalo na si, si Bongbong, sabi ko, my God, this is so terrible. Kasi, you know, everyone talks about it in terms of, ay, magnanakaw, magnanakaw. But alam mo, pag nakakausap ko yung mga uh, mahihirap, pag sinabi mo, magnanakaw si A, hindi magnanakaw si B, parang manhid na sila kasi sa tingin nila wala namang umaabot sa amin eh nagnanako naman lahat eh so what difference does it make so i thought well why am i opposed to to a marcos duterte admin and really my reasons have to do with human rights and i i would say very simply na um hinanap ko talaga yung photo na yan. And dapat, actually, February pa, nasulat ko na yung sinulat ko. Pero doon pumapasok yung issue ng political economy kasi napakahirap hanapin ng mga records dahil walang pera mag, para sa camera yung pamilya ng biktima. Wal, wala silang pera para pumunta sa doktor. Kung may records man, inaanay, uh, nabaha, or um, hindi mahanap-hanap. And even I, I interviewed doctors, forensic pathologists, um, and one doctor who did an autopsy after... 40 years was still too traumatized to be interviewed. And so, parang, and they had, pag analog, bago mag-digital, um, maraming hindi na lang nila tinatago yung mga file nila. But anyway, to make a long story short, finally, so, medyo nag-aaway na kami ng asawa ko kasi sabi niya, baka naman you just imagine that picture. And sabi, kasi sabi ko, ang dami ko nang binasa mga scholar na, um, you know, everybody is saying there are, if you read the, the uh, Human Rights Violations Victims Board reports, if you read the reports uh, of the um, Hilao versus Marcos case in Hawaii, may mga list ng lahat ng mga uri ng torture na 
ginawa ni Marcos. And other scholars have repeated kung anong nakasulat sa transcript. At nung minabasa ko, sabi ko, kulang ko. Oh, okay, hindi ko sinasabing walang walang electric shock, water cure. Alam ko yung, yung the uh, San Juanico Bridge. We're familiar with that. Pero talagang yung pinaglalaban ko talaga na may nakita ko nung 16 ko at nagbago ang buhay ko. Yung parang everything na pinapaaral sa akin seemed irrelevant until I could find this photo source. So, hindi from siguro February to May, hinahanap ko from the Philippine end. Pero syempre, mahabang waiting period. So, hinanap ko uh, from US and European archives. And nahanap ko na yung nag-photograph ng photograph ay isang German forensic radiologist, very respected, Dr. Hermann Vogel. And he was published in a European journal and a European Journal of Radiology and in American uh, Atlas of uh, Atlas, Radiologic Atlas. Um, hinanap ko talaga si Dr. Fogel, patay na. Hinanap ko yung mga co-author niya, patay na. Yung asawa niya, hindi ko na mahanap. So, to make a long story short, yung malapit na yung eleksyon, wala, wala, hindi ko makorroborate. And I did not want to give fake news. I wanted to really honor the experience of this person. At hindi talaga ako magsasalita hanggat empirically validated uh, ang anko. So finally, at the last minute, this wonderful woman, Adele, from the Medical Action Group, in the Philippines and Dr. Uh, Aurora Parong, tinulungan nila ako. Tapos one day, may pinagala sila sa akin na, na report. And doon ko nakita yung picture na hinahanap ko since 16 years old ako. At doon ko lang nalaman na pangalan pala niya si Buenaventura Tampipi. At ngayon ko lang na-realize, oh my God, bakit sa dami-dami ng mga activists na kaibigan ko, mga protest writers, singers, bakit yung story ni Mr. Tampipi, nobody talked about it? Because to me, I mean, hammering a nail into someone's head and, and doing it para hindi mamatay yung tao and buhay siya for three weeks after, that is a very, very unusually high level of cruelty. So, uh, for me, kung, sina, kung, kung halimbawa ako, um, uh, tito ko si Fidel Ramos, pag may nagsabi sa akin na, um, oh, may kasalanan siya sa ganito, ganyan, kung tama yung tao, inaamin ko. Kung hindi tama, Bina-validate ko kung bakit ako may ibang pananaw. Eh si Bongbong, never siya nag-apologize. Never siya nag-acknowledge. So for me, parang na napakalalim naman ang kabastusan niyan sa mga naging biktima. Like, sinong tao ang may karapatan magsabi na, oh, these are nuisance cases. Like, how dare you? Like, how would you say that to the mother of someone who was tortured? Your complaints are just uh, nuisance cases. I mean, the arrogance. And if you read the reports of Archimedes Trajano in, uh, that uh, were filed by his mother, Agapita, I mean, it was horrible. And I may admitted it in the U.S., and yet, you know, she says, yeah, well, so what? Now, for me, I mean, of course, marami na sa, sa teoria at sa academic world, madami nagsasabi, tayo ay nasa post-human rights world na. 
nagbago na hindi na political rights ngayon na ang panahon na economic rights ang pinag-uusapan or or gender uh, 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 persuasion but no longer political you know that is very sad i mean that's like saying we're in a post feminist world well hangga't inaabuso ang mga kababaihan will never be in a post feminist world you know and so um and i know with chinese encroachment into international institutions like the united nations in terms of the budget right and the us pulling out uh, of of several institutions although with the biden administration bumabalik na naman but the point is nababali wala na ang napakagandang arkitektura na na um, ginawa in the 90s you know and so for me if you say uh, the fact that bong bong and i me never said gosh you know i think i wasn't there when it happened but i read the reports and i agree that was really bad you know and that's terrible like one of her you know or like stalin's daughter you know admitting um i think the fact that they deny it you know your mind reels because every presidential administration has a particularly different kind of torture like arab i remember those years when it was you know journalists inside water drums and then they would shoot uh and then the person would just fall into the posse and die and that is very characteristic of arab and now we have duterte and uh not as much torture a lot more killing a lot higher numbers but you see the combination of bongbong and sara to me is terrifying for human rights for several reasons and i wrote about it in my paper kasi hindi naman porke babae ka feminista ka okay i mean in my opinion cory aquino and gma were not really feminists kung pinaglalaban mo ba talaga ang mga karapatan ng mga kababaihan and sa tingin ko um the fact na sinabi ni sara ginahasa siya. Tapos sinabi ng tatay niya, "Hay drama queen lang 'yan." And sinabi ni Sarah, "Oh, yung rape joke ng tatay ko, hindi naman na ako na bother doon." Like I mean, wow. I mean, what kind of a message? What kind of a role model? for abused women women young women uh how terrifying because not only are the men normalizing violence when the women acquiesce to the normalization of violence eh, paano na tayo lahat right and the fact na nag ej action din siya meron siyang sinuntok i mean you're going to head the judiciary and you don't even believe in the spirit and the intent of the law so to me i mean for and then here's another thing since i left happily left government in 2019 and i came to america i started to write about yung mga monuments sa Pilipinas dahil nga nagkaroon ng Black Lives Matter and in isinusulat ko ano ang connection or, or ano ang relevance ng Black Lives Matter sa Pilipinas at sa Asia and in a nutshell i came to the conclusion that virtually all our monuments are catholic elite male uh, monuments tagalog lowland cebuano bisaya that's it you know it's pinya it's it's a certain hegemonic mold all the way so and daming hindi na represent kaya naging interested ako sa mga comfort women kasi yung mga statue ng mga comfort women bigla na lang tinanggal 
Kaya yun ang ginawa kong research in the past two years. And all I wanna say is, hinahanap ko talaga yung pera na binigay ng Japanese government uh, sa Pilipinas sa 1951 from the San Francisco Peace Treaty. Um, may reparations eh. So binabasa ko talaga, hinihimay ko, kung which agency got what. Kasi yung mga lola na nakakausap ko, wala nang, wala, konting-konti na lang yung nasa kanila. So, uh, in a nutshell, sa kakahanap ko, kalkal ng mga records from DSWD, kalkal ng mga records ng mga NGO, nabasa ko sa isang report na Marcos and his ambassador to Japan, they, the money that should have gone to the women went to Marcos. So what I mean is people don't talk about it as much because it's a bigger, it's a sexier story if a rich person steals from another rich person. But I would like to deconstruct that and propose that stealing from the poor must be the most really uh, unutterably abominable thing you can do. Like, go ahead and steal from the rich. It doesn't really bother me. First, I mean, of course, you shouldn't steal, but if you're going to do it to survive, wag naman yung mga mahihira. And those, you know, so all I'm saying is so many things have been unaccounted for. And um, last na lang, kasi medyo mahapon na to, um, kung ako ang tatanungin bakit dumating ang mga, bakit nakabalik ang mga Marcos sa Pilipinas, sa tingin ko, lahat tayo may kasalanan. But definitely, all administrations since EDSA won, are responsible. I mean, first, Sikori, she said, let's just, you know, forgive. You know, it's, it's the, you know, blame the sin, not the sinner. You know, and of course, we love that Catholic spirit, but that started it. And even when the, there were, in 1986, when there were uh, the killers of, uh, the so-called killers of Ninoy were tried. Um, it was always and only low-level people. Nobody ever answered the deep, dark secret in Philippine history, which is who killed Ninoy Aquino and why was whoever it was, and some of us have strong ideas, they were never brought to justice. So you see this trend. And of course, kasalanan din ni FBR, bakit niya sinabi, o sige na nga, pauwiin na nga si Marcos. And in fairness to my tito, I know for a fact, because I remember, there were so many coups during the time of Cory that by the time my uncle was in opposition, parang he wanted to neutralize the Ilocano pro-Marcos sentiment by acceding to them. And I can see how from a tactical point of view, that makes political sense. Yung wag mo naman silang i-alienate masyado, kung hindi, lalo silang magiging problema. But you see, when the body came back and Imelda Marcos started to create this phantasmagoria in Ilocos Norte with the Marcos Museum and tapos parang Rembrandt na may chiaroscuro, ang ganda-ganda ng parang si Lenin sa, sa, sa Red Square ang, ang katawan ni Marcos. And, you know, by the time she was giving money to art galleries and uh, museums and libraries and universities. And again, ang konteksto, precarity. So 
na nag-gets mo din kung bakit ang isang head ng isang museum would say, oo nga naman, kung kukunin natin yung pera na yan, aba, we can build a new ring, a new wing, ang dami nating magagawa. I mean, so it's like, it's an entire socially incremental continuum of human beings every step of the way. Guadalupe Market, Imelda Marcos comes, everybody say, ay, ang nandyan si ma'am, ang ganda-ganda ng kutis. You know, it's like post-1986. And, you know, so what I'm saying is, I really, um, if, 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 if what this means is that the Filipino can be bought, then that is an immeasurable tragedy. Kung wala na tayong pride, kung wala na tayong self-respect, na basta na lang may pera para may pagkain, I mean, how many steaks can you eat? So, I just, I feel that um, the elite, the art galleries, I, re I remember trying to auction some of our art. I'd go there, the Marcuses were there everywhere. You know, they were welcomed with open arms. So, you know, hindi tayo pwede magmalinis dahil lahat tayo at some level, of course, some more than others. So, um, I feel, and as, as the scholar Al McCoy has said, yung security apparatus ni Marcos, hindi dinismanto ni Cory. And there were a lot of vigilante groups, Tanpad, Alsamasa, you know, Ilaga. You know, there were a lot of those things. And the military was allowed to be more and more powerful. So from a centralized power source during the Marcos years, power becomes decentralized in these feudal uh, feudal warlords. So I'm sorry I'm I'm talking so long. I just want to say that nahanap ko yung photo and nobody not in the task force detainees uh, not in Karapatan, not in Bantayag ng mga bayani. I guess Mr. Tampipi was not in the records. And so that's why I felt I had to find him. And um, yun, that's um, nahanap ko na siya. And gusto kong isulat yung buhay niya. Kung bakit ba nangyari yun sa kanya. At kung bakit siya ang pinagsipan. Although... Hindi naman may reason most of the time. Anyway, I'm sorry for talking so long, but yun po ang general idea ng trabaho ko. Thank you. Yeah. Um, salamat, Leila. Uh, marami kang... You raised more questions, actually, than answered some. And... At this point, sa puntong ito, lalo na ng ating kasaysayan, mas mahalagang magtanong. Nasa na tayo ngayon? Um, so, ang reflection lang na nagsimula yon sa isang imahen na hindi it gripped you, hindi, hindi makamwala. And I hope, uh, sana mapag-usapan natin yan later. Ngayon naman, lilipat tayo sa mga bagay-bagay na nandyan na. Pero dahil sa kawalan ng um, pakialam, O dahil siguro sa ayaw ng ibang makita ito, isi, isinasan tabi ito. At ito ang uh, tatalakayin ng ating kaibigan na si Donna Sermento. Sermeno, sorry Donna. Flynn. Um, si Donna Tagaantike kung saan nabuhay at 
pinatay si Evilio Javier. Sasabihin niya kung sino si Evilio Javier doon sa mga hindi hindi siya maalala o hindi siya kilala. Um, si Donna ay isang social justice advocate at dahil sa mga ikikwento niya ngayon, um, isa siyang heritage and I would call her memory advocate. And I think ito yung ito yung kailangan nating um, harapin. Isa sa mga kailangan nating harapin para makayos ang ating pag-usad. Um, Donna. Uh, magandang gabi, magandang umaga sa lahat. Um, ako po ay uh, nagagalak na makasama dito sa uh, panel ng mga uh, bisita ngayon na uh, panauhin sa uh, uh, event na ito. Um, isang uh, how do you call that? Disclaimer. Isa lang ako sa maraming mga antikenyo na um, naghahangad na magkaroon ng isang museo para kay Evelio B. Javier. 46 years na nung since na pinaslang siya, wala pa rin museo na nagbibigay parangal para sa buhay na inialay niya sa Pilipinas. So, ano ba ang maalala ko tungkol kay Evelio Javier? Uh, sa antike, tawag namin sa kanya Beloy. So, uh, nung maliit pa ako, kaibigan niya yung tatay ko. So, nagbibisita yan sa, sa bahay namin para uminom ng tuba. Tuba is wa- coconut wine. Um, maliit lang ako, hindi ko naman siya kilala. So, alam ko lang, merong isang nagbibisita sa bahay namin pagkagabi, walang 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 paalam, basta lang yun, makipagkwentuhan kay tatay, mag-inuman, tapos uwi na siya. Siya pala yung governor ng antike. So nung high school na ako, ang maalala ko ay yung may malaking karatula na nilagay sa labas ng, ng, ng building na nakalagay na uh, ang, ang gobyerno, ang posisyon sa gobyerno, bukit para nublian bukat burugasan. Um, ibig sabihin na ang ang anumang tungkulin sa gobyerno sa pamahalaan ay hindi magiging uh, uh, source of wealth at saka hindi rin minamana or you know hindi ito pinapasa sa mga kamag-anak. So yun yung yung yun yung kanyang uh, malakas na mensahe sa akin kahit na estudyante pa lang ako. Fast forward 1986, yung image na, na maalala ko ay nung uh, senior ako sa kolehiyo sa nung Pebrero bago magkaroon ng EDSA revolution, narinig namin na namatay siya, pinas lang siya sa antike at dinala yung kanyang bangkay sa Maynila. So mal- malhabang parada ang, ang nangyari hanggang dinala siya sa loob ng campus ng Ateneo kung saan senior ako, nag-aaral ako doon sa Ateneo. So nakita ko itong larawan na ito nung nasa loob ng um, college chapel. Uh, kagaya ni Lila, malakas na image ito na, 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 na natili sa akin kahit na 46 years na nakalipas. So et, ito, yung aking, ito yung aking personal na karanasan na nakita ko ang nangyari sa kanya. Pero bakit mahalaga ba ito para sa akin? Kasi siya yung nag, nag, uh, nagbigay sa akin ng inspirasyon na, na patuloy na makipa, ma, ipaglaban ang karapatang pantao at um, social justice. Yun yung nagsimula yung passion ko for social justice when I, I saw that image. Um, so uh, even up to now, I still continue to, to work for justice because of his example because of what um, he demonstrated to us that life is not just for oneself but for others. So bilang atinista, nakarelate talaga ako doon sa kanyang halimbawa. So fast forward again, 46 years later, nang, nagkampanya si, si Lenny sa Antique, sa, sa, sa Freedom uh, Park, kung saan doon pinaslang si 
a value. So, siya yung nag-point out na ito, ang, ang lugar na ito ay makasaysayan sa Pilipino. Kasi dito, yung, yung ating bayani ay nag, nag, nag-alay ng buhay niya para sa atin. So, if we remember, what happened was that a value was sitting in front of the capital of, uh, of San Jose, Antique. And someone in broad daylight gunned him down. He ran. He tried to escape. And they cornered him inside a restroom and, got, and shot him 20 times more after that. So ganun, the, ganun ang, ang intent. Patayin siya talaga. And, uh, you know, so yun yung, yung, yung kwento na lumabas after um, Lenny pointed out the significance of the, the, grants, of the, the site, the park. And then a couple of days later, nalaman ng mga antikenyo na may balak si Bongbong Marcos na magkaroon ng rally doon rin sa Freedom Stand na yon, sa park na yon. So nagbalaho ba yung mga tao? I mean, no way. And, and for us, the, the reaction was very, was visceral. That you can't do that. That's a sacred place for Antikenyos. So after that, we started talking, sana ba yung mga, mga, uh, mga you know, yung, sana yung mga gamit ni Evelio. So we started having this, this revival of interest in the life of Evelio after what happened. And then to find out to our horror that all these items that belong to Evelio was wrapped in plastic bags in an abandoned building right next to the capital of Antique. Binalot na lang ng ganyan. So we were really upset about what happened. And so we started talking, we can't do this. I mean, part of us also blame ourselves for what happened because we just assume, you know, somebody with that kind of stature, his memory or his, his things will be uh, taken care of, but it wasn't. So, do not simula yung 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 movement to start um, this uh, this um, petition to start a museum. So, up to now, we have uh, like around sixteen hundred um, uh, signatories of people, not just Antikenyos, but also of other Filipinos who believe in democracy those who have been inspired by the life of Evelio Javier. There's a lot of parallel in the story of Lila with what happened to Evelio Javier. Um, to, to say that Marcos was responsible for his death is, is, not a, is not something that would be like short of imagination because it is for real. The, the day after the Marcoses fled the palace there was a there was a logbook where it was entered that um pacificador was paid i don't know how many millions and of course how would you conclude what what do you think was the payment for and so for us you know the collective trauma of his death and the collective grief is still with us and that's what pushes us to be to move on and really be able to to accomplish that goal of um, establishing a museum in his name because we want not just us but our future generation to remember the the gift of the gift of democracy that Evelio gave us not just for Antique but for the whole country. Also, we want to make sure that. Our, our future Antikenyos will continue to take pride in our, in our heritage because in the past, we, we, we did not have that. A value helped us restore our pride as Antikenyos. We were always known or labeled as aswang or labeled as sakadas. And, you know, I don't belittle being sakada or seasonal farm workers, but what it tells us is the 
um, acute poverty that Auntie Kenya's experienced, and also the lack of access to education that you know makes them end up working as seasonal farm workers in Negros, and they put through a lot of the of the you know inhuman conditions that are part of working in the farm uh, temporarily in those haciendas. So uh, that is my story. And I hope that I am able to also gather a lot of, um, of support for this movement. Because this movement is not just for us Antiquenos, it's a movement for us Filipinos. And, you know, um, the, the, those who deny martial law happened are the ones who are trying to erase these symbols, these reminders of, of what happened. And Evelio is one of those that they're trying to, to uh, under, I know, what do you call, how do you? Undermine. Undermine. They even want to change the title of the airport, which is named Evelio B. Javier Airport. They want to remove that name. They don't want that title anymore. But, I mean, how can they do that? But for us, you know, so that ends my, my sharing about how how I reacted to reading Lila's um, article because it was also like a very tagos um, I, I can I will not deny that I cried after reading that because it very much reminded me of what happened to Evelio. Thank you. Yeah. Uh... Salamat, Donna, sa pag, 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 pagpabahagi ng um, iyong mga kaisipan. Um, meron, meron tayong mga uh, reactions dito? Or dito si um, Stella um, Ishihara, nandito actually siya yata sa, ano eh, sa, sa studio. Uh, sabi niya, um, hello, Miss Donna. I'm also from Antique. My father talked nonstop of Evelio Javier. My family from both mother and father's side have his picture frame with the impossible dream lyrics next to it. Um, meron din po tayong uh, mga reactions on where we're streaming right now. Uh, Perhaps if Georgia could show that, um, we can read it or something. Kung, kung may tanong ho kayo we, uh, sa, mga, sa mga past speakers at, sa mga, at kay Dr. Uh, Barbaza na sunod natin magsasalita, pakisulat na lang sa, ano, sa, sa Facebook. Um, so, ayon. Uh, thank you. Pa Galing kay Aurora Parong. I think I know her. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lila. I admire your courage and persistence for truth. If I recall correctly, the case of Mr. Tampipe was included in Sylvia's testimony at the Hawaii court. Um, can I respond or should you let Momo? Yeah, please go ahead. Just I one. actually see Dr. Alvarong is, was a huge help. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Al. Um, yeah, I tried to reach Sylvia de la Paz and she wasn't available, but I would like to see that. Thank you so much for telling me. And before I forget, na mention ni Donna yung petition na um, pina, pinalalaganap. If you don't mind putting it on, I'll put it on my page as well. Because um, this is important. We, sino tayo kung makakalimutan natin ang ating mga pinagdaraanan? So, uh, si Hannah will be coming in to introduce our next guest. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. So our next um, commenter is Dr. Ramon Barbaza. So he is an associate professor of philosophy at the Ateneo de Manila University, where he served as chair 
of the Department of Philosophy and as the Acting Dean of the School of Humanities. He earned a BA in Linguistics from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, an MA in Philosophy from the Ateneo de Manila University, and a PhD in Philosophy from the Hochschul für Philosophy Mun Munhen in 2002. His research interests include Heidegger, technology, language, the city, environment, and translation. So let us all welcome Dr. Ramon Barbasa and his comment about the about the need for us to to, to learn from history. Maraming salamat, Hannah, sa iyong uh, uh, introduction. At uh, hello sa lahat, uh, magandang umaga, magandang hapon, magandang gabi kung nasaan man kayo. Ano. Uh, may isang pag-amin muna, ano, I have, I'll, I'll confess. Uh, ngayon ko lang nabasa yung, kay, yung post ni Lila. No? Alam niyo naman, sa dami, uh, puno po na yung Facebook, ng, di ba, puro election. So ang daling matabunan. Tapos itong nabasa ko, grabe, ang pikat-pikat. No? At nakita ko yung kahalagahan ng uh, ginagawa ni Lila. No? Kaya uh, hindi ko nga matapos-tapos basahin, no? Uh, so, uh, naimbitahan ako para magbigay ng tugon no? tungkol sa yung kasaysayan ng, ng karahasan. So, pwede pakita ng slide. No? Uh, pasensya na ha. Mag, hindi ako yung nag-operate kaya madalas ako magsabing next please. No? So, ito. No? From a history of violence to violence against history, prospects of redemption. Next please. No? History is uncanny. Makababalaghan ng kasaysayan. Next, please. How uncanny that our long and seemingly endless history of violence is now taking the form of violence against history itself. No? Parang ibang, ibang nibel na ito. No? Uh, next, please. What happens when history itself be becomes the target of violence? There is growing evidence on how the Marxists is heavily invested to rewrite history according to their terms. This means inflicting violence once more, as if the violence that they already inflicted on the Filipino people wasn't enough. Once more, and this time against history itself. Next, please. What is history anyway? That it can be targeted by violence. Next, please. We humans are the stories that we tell. No? Yung, yung kwento, pagkakwento ni Lila kanina, ni, ni Donna, no? at ng marami sa atin. No? Next, please. No? History is contested because our humanity is contested. No? Next, please. No? History as making sense of ourselves. No? Uh, later on, I will I will go back to this point uh, in the context of our Filipino language. No? Uh, uh, my, my apologies, I, I prepared this uh, thinking it would be an international audience, so I, I wrote in English, no? but um, I, uh, I'll be speaking also in Filipino later. Next, please. So we contest the past in order to control the future. Next, please. We ought not to forget Benaventura Tampipi. No? Uh, and, and thanks to Lila. No? Uh, salamat kay Lila. Nakikilala natin si Buenaventura Tampipi. No? At you know, habang binabasa ko yung, yung paglalarawan ng report ng autopsy, no? uh, hindi ko matapos-tapos basahin. No? At tama si Lila. No? Parang iisipin mo no? yung, yung, yung hirap at sakit na dinaanan. No? At napaisip din ako yung pangalan niya, Good Fortune. No? Good Venture, Good Fortune. At ang pipi, lalagyan. No? Lalagyan ng mabuting uh, kapalaran. No? Pero kabaligtaran. No? Pero para sa atin ngayon, siguro yung alaala ni tampipi ay isang tampipi, isang, isang, isang sisidlan ng kasaysayan na dapat nating balik-balikan. No? Next please. No? Naalala ko itong, nung bumisita ako sa uh, concentration camp, no? dahil nung nag-aalala ko sa Munich, yung katabi na niyang Dachau, no? May nakalagay doon sa harap itong uh, nakaukit sa bato, Denket Daran, Vivia Staben. No? Alalahanin niyo kung paano kami namatay dito. No? Next please. No? Trahano, 
Hobson, Javier, Mijares, Escandor, Aquino, Alejandro. No? Napakahaba ng listahan, halos walang katapusan. No? Hindi dapat malimutan ang bawat isa sa kanila. No? Next please. No? Pero nag-uusap kami ni ni Dem, no? si Isabel. No? Uh, magkaibi, magkakilala kami nung college pa. No? Uh, at sabi ni Dem, baka napakabigat. No? Kailangan din natin tingnan uh, ano ba yung baka may, may liwanag naman sa dulo. Baka may pag-asa. No? At sa tingin ko, oo. oo no? uh, those of you have been following news of the uh, elections in the Philippines, no? I think you can sense. No? These days, people are speaking of something new. Next, please. A new hope, perhaps. Pagong pag-asa. Next, please. Uh, just to name a few. Next, please. Unang-una, yung incredible energy. No, pambihira. No? Nung sumama ko nung una sa Pasig, no? Ano yan, hindi ko pa alam kung ano yung dadat na. No? Talagang hindi mo ma... Kailangan nandun ka. Sabi ko, 1980s kasi yata yung huling makaranas ako ng ganitong klaseng enerhiya, no? Um, pambihira, no? Next, please. No? Tapos yung, yung, yung spirit of volunteerism, talagang kamangha-mangha. No? Kailangan tingnan nyo lahat na nangyayari. No? Bata, matanda, kahit yung naka-wheelchair, no? yung pagnanasa no? na makilahok no? at kusang loob, no? volunteerism, no? pambihira. No? Um, May pagka-cathartic ang nangyayari. Ano? Uh, next, please. No? Ito rin, yung burst of creativity. No? Sabi nga nila, no? art arises in times of crisis and catastrophe. No? At totoo ngayon, kahit saan kayo uh, bumaling, no? at sa lahat ng mga campaigns, sa limbawa ni Lenny, no? uh, napapansin namin, no? Ay, kumbaga pabonggahan ang bawat lugar, kanya-kanya, kung anong meron sa Bicol, kung anong meron sa Antipolo, yung mga higante, kung saan man, no? yung, 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 yung local culture, yung local art. No? At lahat, no? uh, lahat ng uri ng artists, ng mga alagad ng sining, uh, composers, you know, visual artists, filmmakers, rappers, lahat, sabihin mo, dancers, no? talagang uh, makulay at punong-puno ng enerhiya. No? Uh, next, please. Uh, at yung nakikita ko rin yung parang may bagong nangyayari, no? yung, yung taking the politics into, the, into our hands, no? in the positive sense, in the good sense. No? Uh, kasi may nagsasabi, huwag, huwag, halimbawa sa, sa chat namin noon sa ano, aming, uh, high school group ko, sa may nagsabi na huwag, huwag na tayo makialam dyan, hindi naman tayo, kahit sino naman nakaupo sa ita. Mahalal, wala. Hindi naman tayo kilala ng mga yan. Hindi tayo maapekto. Ano, hindi totoo yun. Ano? Everything is political. No? At yun nakikita ko ngayon yung mga tao kahit hirap na hirap. No? Nung uh, isang araw nakita ko dito sa Sumulong, sa pupunta Antipolo, paakyat. Mahirap umakyat dyan. Isang grupo ng mga senior citizens na mamahagi ng mga flyers. Sa imit. No? So, dito nakikita ko yung isina sa kamay. No? ng tao na ngayon na siniseryosa nila ngayon ang politika no? at sa akin palagay mahalaga yun no? it's a good sign no? kasi politics is a noble task hindi ba no? ang politika ay para sa ikabubuti ng lahat nagiging madumi ito kapag ating pinababayaan at iniiwan sa mga kamay ng taong makasarili no? di ba ang, ang polis ang bayan no? uh, kahit si Aristoteles sinabi na political science is the ruling science no pinakamataas. No? Ethics is politics. Politics is ethics. No? Uh, next, please. No? At yun, uh, ang dami din uh, komprantasyon ang nangyayari ngayon. Um, uh, kumisa nagiging pangit, no? ugly confrontation. Pero sa ko, kailangan. No? Uh, at nagkakaroon ng lakas ng loob ang mga taong uh, makipagdialogo. Uh, yung mga nag-house doon sa limbawa, uh, alam na nila, pwede silang sigaw-sigawan, pero okay lang, sige lang, masa tao sa tao. Itong sinasabi, no? tao sa tao, puso sa puso. 
isip sa isip. Isang uri ng konfrontasyon na sa tingin ko ay napakagandang uh, palatandaan na may nangyayaring maganda. No? Uh, next please. No? So talagang it's a political campaign like we've never seen before. No? Kaya ito lalampas pa ito ng election. No? Whatever happens, whoever wins in the uh, uh, sa election na to, na may momentum eh. Uh, na malalim. Next, please. A deeper source of energy beyond the elections. Kaya na kahit kami sa pamantasan, no, sa university kung saan na nagtatrabaho, sa Ateneo, no, nagkaplano na kami no, na kailangan uh, long term, no, uh, wag sayangin yung momentum no, uh, beyond candidates. No, uh, kasi, di ba, anim na taon lang naman sila nakaupo, pero yung, 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 yung politika, no, bilang pag, pagtatanggol ng, 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 ng nakararami, ng, ng bayan, ito ay, ay hindi natatapos na gawain. Kaya may nagsasabi din, next please. No? Mukhang, mukhang yung democracy natin, umuulad, pakaunti-unti. No? May nagsabi, is this a sign of relatively mature democracy? Posible. No? Uh, next please. No? Uh, so ito ngayon, no? um, nagkakaroon ng, ng uh, palatandaan na yung taking politics no? into our hands, a political agency, may magagawa ako. Uh, bawat boto, mahalaga. Bawat, bawat kilos, mahalaga. No? At laban sa kawalan ng, 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 ng pag-asa, itong cynicism, jadedness, resignation, hindi. No? Uh, may bugso may motibasyon, may enerhiya, no? may, may kakayahan tayong kumilos. No? Uh, next please. No? Pero mahaba pa ang, ang, ang labanan. No? There's a long road ahead of us. We are clearly experiencing a momentum that we don't remember having experienced before. This is something alive within us. Buhay ito. No? But like anything alive, it can also wither. It can also die. And therefore, we have to nurture it. No? We, have to, we have to keep it alive. No? Keep the fire burning, as they say. No? Uh, next slide, please. No? And back to uh, an earlier point, uh, history is making sense. As I've said, I'll, I'll go back to this. No? And, and at ngayon, no? nais kong pakinggan ang ating wika. Next slide, please. No? Ang kasaysayan. No? May saysay ang kasaysayan. No? Siguro hindi ito naririnig sa ibang uh, salita no ng history o sa aleman kasiste no sa atin kasaysayan di ba saysay no may sense no may kahulugan no? ang saysayan ay ang kasaysayan ay makahulugan no? next please no? nasaan no Nasaan ang saysay ng kasaysayan? Next, please. Nasa mga taong tapat na nagsasalaysay ng ating kasaysayan. Kaya nga contested. History is always contested. Kaya sa harap ng historical revisionism, no? ng nga nasabi ni Lila kanina at ni Donna, sa pagtatangkang burahin, no? itong, itong, itong uh, marahas na pagbubura, no? Hindi lang pinas lang uh, ng pisikal ang tao, pero binubura sa kasaysayan. No? Ito na yung kasukdula ng karahasan. No? Kaya ang saysay ng kasaysayan ay ang ating paglaban dito. No? At uh, ang, ang, ang paggiit ng tapat at makatotohan ng pagsasalaysay ng ating kasaysayan. No? Uh, next, next please. No? A pasintabi kay Platon, no? sinabi niya, no? an unexamined life is not worth living, no? na isinala ni Padre Roque Ferriols. Ang buhay na hindi kinikilatis ay hindi buhay tao. Maaari nating sabihin, ang buhay na hindi kinikilatis ay walang saysay. Next please. Ang buhay na hindi kinikilatis ay walang kasaysayan. At naiisip ko, no? Muli, no, sa mukha, mula sa larawan. No? Dito ko nais magtapos. No? Uh, kasi mayroong thesis defense kamakailan dito sa amin sa Philodep. No? May isang sudyante yung 
yung uh, ano ba yung kaugnayan ng emosyon at ng iyong iniisip at action. Kasi yung nakita ni Lina, litrato na lang yun eh. Bakit ang tindi ng, ng, ng kanyang reaction doon? E, e paano yung mismong gumawa nung kilos na yun, nung pagpas lang kay Benaventura? Nakita rin nila yun, pero iba. No? So ano, bang, ano ba ang connection ng emotion? No? Di ba? Emotion yung, yung nagpapatakbo no? ng kasaysayan. No? Pero kailangan natin matutong dumama sa tamang dahilan no? at sa tamang no? na, 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 na sabi nga ni Lili Karina, di ba karumaldumal ito. No? Hindi, hindi ito katatawanan. No? Di ba? At kailangan nating uh, kailangan nating uh, magalit. No? Sabi nga, it, it cannot be si, si nakita niyo rin sa damdamin no? ni Donna kanina. No? At naisip ko rin, di ba, ang sabi na nina ng mga Marcos at mga taga supporta sa kanila, Pap, pap. kalimutan nyo na yan. Let's move on. Nakalipas na yan. Ganito ang pag-move on. Ito yung moving on. Moving on first demands making an account of oneself. No? Moving on means taking the past with us no? towards the future. No? Ganito ang move on. Yung ginagawa ni Lila. Yung ginagawa ni, ng anak ni, ni General Fabian Ber, no? si Juana, na napakahalaga. Ganito ang move on. No? At nais nice ko mag, magtapos no, sa isang naalala kong sinabi ni Padre, uh, ni Parin Bert, no? Father Albert Alejo, no? sana hindi niya masamain. No? Naalala ko may sinabi, magaman iba yung konteksto. Sabi niya, may alaala ang balat. No? No? May alaala ang balat. No? The skin remembers. No? At sa aking palagay ito, no? huwag natin kalimutan, no? tumatagos sa buto at laman higit po, sa puso at ating diwa no ang lahat ng naganap sa ating kasaysayan at sana ay hindi natin malimutan alang-alang sa mga taong kagaya ni uh, Benaventura no Tampipi no? sa lahat ng mga pinaslang no? at patuloy na pinapaslang dahil nais burahin sa kasaysayan no? so muli uh, maraming salamat sa inyo lahat sa inyong pakikinig salamat din Lila uli sa iyong Uh, napakahalagang ginagawa at kay Donna sa pagbabahagi at kina Pem, Isabel at Hana sa pag-organisa ng uh, talakayan. Salamat, salamat. Maraming, maraming salamat po, um, Dr. Barbaza. I think what you, what you mentioned po sa huli, yung moving on. Kasi na naririnig ho natin na mag-move on na tayo dyan, di ba? Na, nakikita ho natin yan na ang pag-move on talaga ang tamang pag-move on is really to bring this um these things with us to the future. So napakahalaga po yung nasabi niyo ho um tungkol dito and it's I think um napakaganda pong um analysis and ender for our for our um event po for our talk po today. So right now po may mga comments rin po tayo and then before um ah yes Lila you want to mention something before we move to the open forum. Sige po. Actually, napakaganda ng mga sinabi ni Donna and Momo. So, I was just wondering, can I just respond or do you want me to do it at the end? Okay lang, if so. Yes, please. Um, Kaya na. Yeah. So, I have a few things to say. First, ang ganda-ganda ng sinabi ni Momo. Um, and apropos of pagkikilatis, Um, I'd like to talk about that you know, because I think in the Philippines, there is a difference between heritage and history. If you talk about the government agencies in the business of manufacturing heritage, so NHCP, NCCA, NM, you know, there is a very strict code about what constitutes acceptable Philippine culture. And it's almost as if ang mga ginagawang hero ay yung mga nag-triumph against colonial rule. Hindi yung mga nag-suffer. So, Um, in other words, in other words, you know, you will see 
UNESCO World Heritage Site of Australia, yung kanilang mga convict sites, kung saan sila na incarcerate, you know, as a memory. And there are what you call sites of conscience. And that's part of UNESCO. And I was hoping to, I've been working on trying to do a map of the comfort stations in the Philippines during the Japanese occupation, where not only women and children, but men were, you know, incarcerated. But you see, I think part of the problem is that um, in this frenzied desire to find uh, non-colonial identity, right? Hinahanap natin kung ano yung magbango, magara, makislap, maganda, magaling. And paano mo kikilatisin ang sarili mo kung hindi mo naman inaamin yung baho, yung dumi na dinaanan mo para makarating sa punto na kung saan ka ngayon. So, uh, um, kung ako ang tatanungin mo, ang, um, ang babaw ng, uh, yung mga, kung titignan mo yung mga cultural agencies, kung saan pumupunta ang budget, you know, it's always celebrate, celebrate, you know, bayanihan, Never mind na kung walang anthropological or ethnographic, basta bayanihan. And then wag mo nang problemahin yung mga Muslim ha, and then wag na yung mga Chinese, mga Indian, mga this, uh, indigenous group, basta nakapinya tayong lahat. You know, and it's like, what does that mean? Right? And so, I would say, it's really about economics. If you look at NHCP, for example, National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Bakit ang dami-dami nilang proyekto about Cebu? Well, because a lot of the budget comes from that Osmania clan. It, I mean, but, but a, uh, a state agency of the executive branch should never, never, never be hostage to the political persuasions of ruling families. It should never, as a matter of fact, what, what is happening in the Philippines is whoever has the money, like the Romulo family has a, the money, they will make a bronze statue that costs millions of pesos. But what does that mean? Di kung sino lang maka-afford siya ang merong monument. Tapos yung mga taong hindi maipal, Abay, di buburahin na sila. Because that's exactly what happened. My mom, for example, she despised Ipal. You know, she really thought, what, you're going to do PR? You have no time for PR communications. What's that? You got to work. We have so many things to do. Roll up your sleeves, right? There are people like that in the system who don't want to broadcast what they're doing. And we honor them when we don't notice it when they're living, but when they're dead, we notice it for maybe a year. And then we forget too. And then the world forget, you see? So that's the problem is the, the responsibility of universities and, and uh, government institutions to be objective, do you know that we don't even have a Filipino hero that even Rizal, technically speaking, is not a hero? Because the government agencies did not want to have fights about whether it was Bonifacio or Rizal. And, but the point I'm making is there should be uh, agencies stepping back and saying, Regardless of how much money X is giving me, it seems to me that this unknown figure in Kalinga Apayao bears scrutiny. You know, let's research that person. You know, because I mean, every family is going to say, oh, my uncle was the best. But that doesn't mean anything in terms of the narrative. 
of Philippine history. So I, I submit that um, number one, Philippine history is also social history. It's not the master narrative. The social history of eclipsed personalities. And I believe that we should have monuments for all kinds of different people, like Kian de los Santos or the Comfort Woman statue is a perfect example. It's not always the dawn and the patriarch of a big family. So that's number one. Um, the other thing I was going to say is that there are so many causes in this world, no? So 99% Arab Spring, Prague Spring, uh, Me Too, Tiananmen Square. And so you, you sinasabi ni Momok, you know, that very beautiful moment of, of, you know, we're inspired, there's fervor, there's hope, and we want to be positive. Absolutely. But the thing is, the Lila of 2010 is very different from the Lila of 2022. The Lila in 2022 can now say, sure, let's support Lenny. There's so many exciting things happening. But part of the problem is our own romanticism as voters. It's the notion that if I help you, by tomorrow, there will be no more poverty and no more inequality and, you know, land will be distributed and, you know, there will be no traffic and no drugs. And I'm just saying, as someone who spent 13 years in government, sometimes the expectations of the public are completely impossible to achieve because you will never see a return on investment within a six-year span. It's impossible. You know, you have to invest in something for a long period. So um, I would say I can see why people join the legislature. And I can see why they would say, well, the only way is to enact it into a law. And then once it's a law, then it's sacrosanct. Naga gets koyun. But the problem is we have such an implementation gap in the Philippines that we never implement half of our laws. So um, I think that we really need to enter this whole election scenario with open eyes and say, OK, um, kung manalo si Lenny, and I pray, I hope that she will, my concern is paano na yung burokrasya if Sarah is her vice president? Because that can cripple the bureaucracy if they're not in tandem with one another. So um, I think we should, kagaya ng ginawa ko sometimes in political campaigns, sabi nila, ay, black. Propian, kasi nagsusulat ka na negative tungkol sa isang tao. Dapat maganda lang yung sinasabi mo. Yeah, and that's part of the reason why our analysis is so shallow. There's no dialectic. You know? Kasi paano ka magkakasynthesis? Eh, wala ka namang antithesis. Hanggang thesis ka lang. Diba? So it's always autodidacticism. So, um, yun. And then finally, um, na mention ni, ni Dr. Momok si Dr. Johnny Escandor and um, I wanted to say na he is an unusual case because of the extreme violence enacted upon his corpse you know and it was very different from what happened with Buenaventura Tampipi because he was alive yung kay Escandor Ma, 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 mabagal ang pagpatay sa kanya pero nung namatay na siya they put his brains in his abdominal cavity with plastic bags trash bags and 
dirty underwear. And you have to think, what is the level of hatred that a human being feels that they would desecrate another human being's corpse? I mean, how virulent that is. Kasi kahit pa paano ginagala mo ang patay, patay na nga eh. You know, so, um, yun lang. I, I'm, uh, of course, we should be hopeful. But all I'm saying is even when we win, we have to be vigilant. And even if we lose, we still remain vigilant. And I mean, kahit ako, ang kasalanan ko, masyado akong na-disgust sa mga nangyayari sa Pilipinas. So parang, I didn't want to get involved, you know. But now I, I, I feel, you know, there's too much at stake. So uh, maraming salamat sa inyo. Thank you, Mama. Oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, salamat Lila. Uh, salamat Donna. Salamat Momok. Again, uh, napaka yaman ng usapan mula sa uh, pananaw tungkol sa karahasan hanggang sa pag-aalala napunta tayo sa nation building um, napunta tayo sa pagtanong kung ano yung ating uh, role dito ano yung bahagi natin sa ganito at I'm sure marami pa rin tanong hindi lang sa atin uh, meron tayong um, studio audience. Pakaimbitahin na natin, uh, Hana. Okay, so uh, let us welcome um, three people from Japan. So, Siwia, Stella, and Hans Lee. So, yes, um, I think may mga questions po sila. So, maybe we can start now. So, okay, let me ask siguro si, sinong gusto mauna? Sa inyo, or shall I just call on each of you? Sige, tanong ko na lang muna si Hans Lee. Naka Naka-mute ka, Hans Lee. Pangalang hapon po from Nagoya, and good morning and good evening po sa atin pong mga iba pang nanonood from all over the world. First, pasasalamat po ulit sa presentations at very impassioned sharing ng ating mga uh, speakers for today. My question, if you will, would like I would like to ask them perhaps to what do they think about kung ano ba yung posibleng nakakaligtaan natin or nawawala sa atin when it comes to our difficulty of cultivating cultural and social memory. And in addition to that, not just memory per se, but the empathy and solidarity expected to come from that mem- from that memory. Kasi kung binanggit naman din po ni Dr. Barbaza na ang punto ng kasaysayan ay yung saysay, di ibig sabihin yung saysay na yon dapat may ibinabalik sa ating mga pinipili sa pang-araw-araw sa, bu- sa mundo. And this is coming also from my observation of our problems. I'm kind of doing this as a synthesis na rin, rin sa mga binanggit ng ating mga speakers, but if you don't mind me sharing, um, we kind of spoke of the need to resist yung post-critique when it comes to human rights, to general values. Pero baka kailangan din po kasi nating tanungin, baka kasi yung mga universal values na yon of respect for human rights, empathy, solidarity, baka kasi hindi rin siya as universal as we would like to believe. After all, nakikita na natin yung selective imposition of comfortable stories and narratives. Pero pati yung mismong pagpapapel, pag the downplay sa mga naratibo, mga alaala na yon dahil nga maaaring yung mga taong involved ay may trauma or yung mga tao nga, binanggit na rin naman po ninyo, may interest na ibalik sa dati dahil pakaramdam nila, komportable sila doon. Nakikita na natin ito um, just today. Roe versus Wade, which gives rights for, ano, which, which gives rights to abortion for women, is being rolled back by the Supreme Court of the United States. The memories of World War II and genocide is also fraught with trauma na ayaw pag-usapan at ayaw 
uh, kunin ng responsibilidad ng mga taong involved at maski ng mga biktima. And I'm also founding this as a problem na even when the way we write history, even when the way we treat our pre-colonial past, especially since Dr. Lira mentioned our colonial heritage, it's beginning to be used as a justification for anti-democratic values. I mean, sorry for name dropping the name, but Reynaldo Ileto is writing right now justifying why the leadership of Rodrigo Duterte is actually supposedly very Filipino. And we're, but, but, but when we talk about it, we're not critiquing it, but it's ganyan talaga. So how do we deal with that question? So potential na po sa maraming sinabi. Salamat po. Okay, um, let us just um, collect questions na lang muna and then we can discuss. Ano? So salamat Hansley and then may I call on Mia? Actually, my, quest, my, my question is actually parang related kay Hansley. No? Um, I would like first to say thank you to our speakers no? for, for sharing stories that we don't usually hear and for you know, arousing questions sa atin and for, 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 for us here, na, for you providing a venue for for us to discuss. No? First and foremost, Ms. Lila mentioned that um, Bongbong and Aini um, were not really apologetic about um, the atrocities of martial law. And I just want to, fi- to, to, to point out the significance of an apology because it's actually the start of healing for a lot of us. And um, this is what was mentioned by, um, Dr., uh, by Professor Barbara. And when, she's, when he said that we need to move on, no? one of them also said that hindi sapat ang one million na sword. So yun lang po, yun yung isa sa mga I want to point out. But um, there were also people who pointed out that before in mga newspaper clippings and BBM was actually saying that people don't need apology, they need money. And also, Aini was saying that that's none of your business. So um, this is how these people see us collectively. And um, what I cannot gra- grasp is the way with the way they treat the Filipinos, why is it that Filipinos still embrace them and it seems that we are welcoming them back? So for me, parang, I want to, 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 for you to expound more on that one. And somebody actually touched upon it. Is it really colonial mentality? Is it really Im- embedded or rooted in our um, history? Kaya... Yun na, nandun na ba talaga yung answer why we are welcoming back the Marcuses? Fibo man. So, okay. okay. Maraming salamat, Mia. And let's call on um, Stella. Hi, good afternoon po. Good evening and good morning sa lahat. I'm, um, well, I'm from Antique and I'm from, I'm also from Bacol. So I come from two islands, where martial law was very, very, uh, malakas yung dating ng martial law for both of these islands. So um, for me, the topic of historical revisionism from when Marcos came into power is a very touchy subject for me because I live in both of these places. My, my questions would be like the last maybe since maybe April, uh, tatlo na yung articles na nabasa ko regarding which, parang additional eye-opener para sa akin. Yung isa is when the, um, I don't know where it was published, pero yung topic niyan about uh, the, the Marcus's revising his, uh, a revision of history started long, long time ago. Pa. And what they did, how they, they how they started it. Yung pangalawa was, um, Miss Lila Shahani's ano, uh, ano, article. And then yung isa is when the daughter of Fabian Ver came out to talk about her father. So parang, bakit nga yun lang? Maybe one of my questions would be these points, bakit nga yun lang sila lumalabas? When the historical revision is some, parang talagang malakas uh, ay hindi hindi malakas yung parang it started really really coming out way back in 2016 nandun na eh we didn't we still didn't do anything about it yung parang we we i guess on the other side of the fence we didn't fight back we didn't gather up details and information to start fighting back we allowed this to proliferate like no one has taken up 
historical revisionists who have very, very strong followers like Sasol, like Thinking Pinoy. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys know of them or at least heard of them or at least have read about their posts where they just, I don't know what they do, but they have created such a community na parang no matter what learned people like you guys are, are telling the rest of the world, hindi po mapasok sa audience na control na nila. So what else can we do? You know, how, how can no one has taken up the mantle to fight back in the way that they're fighting against history, against our history, or the history that should be about the recent Philippine, uh, recent, uh, well, recent, kasi 1960s, 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, siya nangyari eh. And this is really like the history that is the battleground right now. No one's taking up the mantle to fight for that history. Ngayon lang talaga lumalabas. Bakit? What can we do about it? And how 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 do we marshal the Filipinos to revise the history that they've been revising? So maybe that. Those are my questions. Okay. Maraming salamat, um, Stella. And yes, um, you mentioned the fake news, no? And historical revisionism. And unfortunately, even academics, I mean, I'm also an academic, and nakakalungkot na mayroon man mga academics na who are trying to revise history and, and come up with all these fake news. So let us open the floor for free discussion. So maybe ask po si Lila, um, Donna, and... Dr. Barbaza, perhaps you can address the questions um, raised by our but by our three guests. Hi, yes, I'd like to do that. Thank you so much for those interesting comments. Um, isa, ko na lang. So I'll start with Hansley. Um, you know, I I I guess really the problem is the process of othering. You know, and when a given cultural group uh, identifies another group uh, and and reduces them to a stereotype so as to contain and control them and to justify their annihilation or erasure. I mean, it's that othering that leads to xenophobia and genocide. And I remember there was a um, nagkaroon ng uh, photo exhibit sa Baclaran Church on the uh, Duterte's drug war. And pumunta kami ng asawa ko si Vince. Um, and yung mga photos, they were very disturbing. Pero ang nahalata namin, lahat ng mga tao dun sa baklaran, hindi sila interesado sa exhibit na nandun sa harap mismo ng church. And it was like, life goes on, what's the big deal? I love pizza, I love hot dogs, I love you. What's the problem? Yung parang, it was just all in a day's work. And I said, paano na umabot sa point na napakamanhid na natin that is become so normalized? Um, so I think this goes back to my mind to the very deep income inequalities in the Philippines where so much is justified by terminologies like nanlaban or adik kase or terrorista or activista and the moment you identify that that's it you could free for all do whatever you want and um so i i i think while we are a, a democracy, we are profoundly anti-democratic. Even pre-colonial Philippines, you know, so many of our ethno-linguistic groups were extremely hierarchical. And dito ko sa America na pupunana, 
People here don't care about titles. You know, they say, your name is Maria, your name is Juan. Pero sa Pilipinas, you have to always say, ay, nako, hair doctor, professor, thing, all the time. And that has to do, that, that's something that we have to break. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is I to get to to uh, Wea's points. You know, um, PCGG, BIR, the Supreme Court. They have mandates. You know, they they their raison d'être is based on the fact that if you are a tax evader for so long and have evaded so much, I am justified in filing a criminal case against you. Now, why would heads of agencies allow themselves to be cowed by what is so blatantly and patently wrong? BIR knows there are tax evasions. I, mean, I think PG, PCGG, I don't know, it, 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 they had so many problems. But, I mean, look at DepEd. And I put in the, in the chat a piece I wrote called Reckoning with the Mar Marcoses and Martial Law History. The bottom line is DepEd has really dropped the ball. I mean, from I've interviewed uh, DepEd secretaries from the Aquino years on to now, and none of them ever prioritized curriculum development. On priority nila parate, building classrooms, building schools, um, um, K to 12. Hindi ko sinasabing hindi yan importante. Of course, it's very important. But, you know, Although we are all responsible, um, certain agencies had a mandate they did not, they were not true to. Now, uh, to, uh, to the point made by Stella, was it Stella? Stella regarding why only now. Um, I, I've been complaining about this since I wrote a blog an open letter to my uncle in 2009 and I was cut off by a lot of members of my family. So I can send you the blog. It's an open letter. It was not welcome, but it went viral. And that's when Noi Noi Aquino asked me to join his campaign. And I didn't write it for him. I, you know, kasi ang nangyayari para when you grow up in these families, parang, um, Ay, nako, kuya so-and-so, tito so-and-so, they're sexist, they're racist, they're classist. It's every single day, it's like that. Sanay ka na, you know, and you just say, okay, what are you going to do? I still have to go to my job. I still have to put gas in my car. So you just try to live your life around these people who are who can be somewhat abusive. And I think it's only when... There is a, 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 a scepter of something terrible that could happen. Dun ka napipilitan magsalita, you know, and maybe that's what happened with Juana. But I mean, if you read my stuff, I've been, you know, complaining about it for a long time. And I think also we cannot underestimate how patriarchs in the Philippines treat female members of their family. I mean, it's not easy to speak out because sometimes the repercussions are, are harsh. But um, anyway, so those are my uh, quick and dirty answers. Thank you. Yeah, salamat. Mock, any thoughts or Donna? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if this is an answer, but I just wanted to go back to our experience at DK when we were when we found out what happened to 
the, the things of Evelio Javier. We had meetings early morning for me and lay, uh, late night for them. We would have Zoom meetings and we would be doing secretly because they're, they were related to people who are in power. Also, um, they also hold positions that felt that they could be threatened by that if they get involved. Also, another thing is that it was really very hard to get information. Hindi madali yung mga documentation to put together the manifesto because we couldn't get the documents that easily. We had to do research and back up every claim that we had. So, yun. Bakit nga yun lang? So, you know, we all, when we talked about this, we all admitted that, you know, we were responsible. So, in many ways, it it has reached this situation because we were very complacent. We just assumed that things were in a good place because that's Evelio. And we didn't know, we didn't realize how, how evil is evil until we were confronted with it. That there was, you know, a, 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 an intentional attempt to remove his memory to re, to erase the, the the role that he played in history, and so um, we have reached this point where we said we're not going to let that happen again. We're we're going to have to work together, and so we we are saddened by what happened, but at the same time we are using that awareness that we are not over. We have not moved on to be able to respond to this. Uh, situation and you know i just want to share a story about how inspiring the the youth of of antique of antique are right now so while they are campaigning what they did there was they put together like uh what are the the teachings of evelio javier and then they put it together with what are the things that stands for or for um what is the platform for lenny robredo and what was the 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 legacy of a value Javier. So on education, on governance, on you know clean and honest um, form of government, con transparency, people participation. They put that together, and that's what they use to campaign do, uh, house to house in in uh, barangays where they have to hike or cross bridges, uh, uh, cross rivers. These are young people. They are college students, and they're doing that, and they are inspired by the legacy of Evelio Javier. So that's just something that you know the museum museum is not there, but I, I hope we are able to pass on the legacy of Evelio. So that's my story. That's my sharing. Salama. Yeah. Um. Mag magsasalita ba si Momo? Ah, uh, sige, konti lang. Ah, uh, siguro pagsama-samahin ko na lang yung sa pagkakaalala ko yung mga tanong, ano? Ah, uh, yung naalala ko kay Hansley kanina, ano, paano yung uh, baka wala naman talaga universal, no? Ah, uh, ang nakita kong magandang nangyayari ngayon, may nabuksan na puwang, uh, space has been opened, no? For us to talk, no? At parang natututo tayo mag makipag-usap. Tingin ko kailangan nating ituloy yan, no? Nakikipag-usap tayo kahit sa isang nasa iba, iba yung sinusuportahan no kasi sana nagkakabiruan pa ano uh, sa palay ko magandang ituloy yan no uh, na mag-usap-usap at di, yung tanong ni Hansel din na uh, universal no na tiyak na tiyak tayo ah this is really wrong no no doubt about this is wrong no? eh, pero nga yung question of uh, human rights eh, western concept ba yan no ano bakit natin pinipilit no kaya bukod sa pag-uusap uh, sa akin palagi mahalaga yung wika no na makinig tayo sa isa't isa uh, at makinig din sa wika mismo no uh, kasi maraming sinasabi yung yung wika no uh, halimbawa nung sabbatical ko noon sa pumunta ako sa mga lumad no sa Mindanao uh, may isa ako napunta mga uh, tagkaulo no ang, ang salita nila sa Dios ay uh, uh, chumanum chumanum no ang nagtanim no at dahil lang sa salita na ginagamit nila sa Diyos, ibang-iba ang relasyon nila. Kapag sila ay pupunta sa gubat para manguha ng mga kahoy, mga prutas, 
nagpapaalam sila, may ritual sila, no? So, uh, uh, yung, yung ginagawa ni Lila, no? Yung uh, uh, pwedeng masabing archaeology, no? Na, nag-uungkat tayo ng kasaysayan, no? Yung wika din mismo ay, ma- ay mauungkat natin at maraming yaman itong maibibigay sa atin, no? Uh, sa akin personal, halimbawa, tama nga si Hans Lee, no? Yun, bawa sa Ateneo University, napaka-Western, no? Kaya halimbawa, nakikinig ako, yung, yung katutubong etika ay matatagpuan natin sa sariling wika, no? Kaya mahalaga yung makinig sa isa't isa. Uh, is, isang tabi muna yung pag-uusga, no? Na, yung sinasabi kanina ni Lila din na othering, no? Uh, napanood ko kahapon yung kwento ng tricycle driver na kung saan sumakay si Lenny, no? Dati pala siyang ano, Marco supporter, no? Pero dahil nakinig at hinayaan siya magsalita at pinakinggan siya, no? Uh, may nangyayari, no? Kaya mahalaga na ipagkatuloy yung pag, uh, pakikipag-usap at may pag-amin din na bawat isa sa atin maaaring magkamali at handa rin tayong maiwasto ng kabila. No? At wala ni isa sa atin ang may hawak ng, ng absolutong tama at katotohanan. Yun, yun ang sa akin palagay mahalaga ang mga attitude sa pagpapatuloy ng, ng uh, pakikipagkapwa-tao. Uh, no? Yan lang. Salamat. No? Maraming salamat, uh, Mamok. Maraming salamat, uh, Lila. Maraming salamat, Donna. Hana. Maraming salamat, Georgian. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Um, ano? Ma- magkokomentaryo rin ako kung papayagan nyo na isang uh, punto na medyo na ulit dito is yung ano yung pagsabi o pag-ako na kasalanan may kasalanan tayo um, ako pag naririnig ko yung palagi lalo na sa sa ating mga Pinoy uh, na kumbaga sa isang setting na sa isang matatawag nating napaka like, like general na concept o, o general o pangkalahatang pangyayari na sabi nating may kasamaan ang bilis nung pagsabing kasalanan natin at sa akin palagi kong pag naririnig ko yan ang tanong ko kasalanan nga ba natin maari may parte tayo doon. Pero kung titingnan natin halimbawa sa punto ng structural, yung annual analysis na structural, ang hirap naman yata na ako, Isabel, pangkaraniwang tao, ang hirap sabihin na kasalanan ko lahat yon O kasalanan natin, tayong mga maliliit o pangkaraniwang tao, tigi isa-isa. Isa-isa. Uh, kasi ang isa sa mga napag-usapan natin dito ay yung power, yung kapangyarihan, structural power. Saan to naka... Where is it lodged? And what has that power done to us? And ito yon, ito yung paghihimagsik ng ating kalooban na may dahas sa ating kapwa na ginawa. May mga imahe na hindi natin matanggal. And dun sa, sa sinalisik ni Lila, si Buenaventura Tampipe, um, lumaki ako, lumaki ako o naging adult na ang daming kwento ng karahasan laban sa pagkatao na ginawa ng Estado. Estado, Martial Law, Marcos. Yun yun. Um, kasalanan ba natin yun? Iwan ko muna yan dyan. Andito tayo ngayon. Uh, at may tanong na bakit ngayon lang? Ang unang pumasok sa isip ko, 
na two words, lotus eaters. Kung alam niyo yung kwento sa Griego, ito yung uh, isla kung saan kumakain ng, ng halaman, lotus, nakakatulog mga tao. Tapos maraming nangyayari, boom, gising, ah, ano na ba to? Parang natulog nga ba tayo? Eh, eh, tanong yan, hindi ko sasagutin ngayon. Pero ngayon andito tayo, um, bakit ngayon lang? Siguro ang magandang sagot ay isa pa o isa at dalawang tanong. Um, where and when is the best place to start? Kailan at saan ang pinaka mabuting paraan para magsimula? Para sa akin, simple lang yun eh. Now is the best place to, now is the best time to start. Here is the best place to start. Saan man tayo? And I think yung nakwento kanina ni Momok na ang ang daming taong nagigising, ang daming taong umaaksyon nitong mga nakaraang buwan dahil ayun nagising, hindi na pwede itong mangyari ulit. Um, saan man tayo, kailan man, ito na yon yung panahon na gawin natin. Kumilos tayo. Huwag nating kalimutan Dalhin natin ang nakaraan. Hindi may paghihimagsik, pero huwag din kalimutan yung pagmamahal. Um, magkabalikat yon, magkaakibat, at sana ipagpatuloy natin ang pagsalisik, pagtanong, pag-aksyon. Salamat. Um, may sasabihin pa. Ana? Okay. Um, maraming salamat ho because we're over time. So I will just um, make my probably comments um, very, very short. Maraming salamat po sa ating mga speakers and for, for all those insights. And napaka-importante po talaga itong topic na ito at kailangan ho natin hindi kalimutan ang ating kasaysayan. At dahil may saysay rin ho ito. And I think yung mga sinasabi ho natin na or yung mga nasabi ho na bakit ngayon lang tayo um, lumabas or bakit ngayon lang natin naririnig ito. Um, I think it's, it's also because mas, mas naging aware lang po tayo ngayon. But I think people have been speaking out in various um, media. And hindi lang so social media. Um, madami rin ho tayong... Um, um, Marami naman hong nagsasalita rin ho. But I think um, how I see it, it's just mas na-amplify po ang voices natin kasi kailangan na ho. Um, and yun nga rin po yung nangyari nga, yung sinasabi rin ho ni, ni Professor Barbaza na yung spirit of volunteerism, yung creativity na, na ilabas ho natin lahat ho yan. Kasi nga ito na ho yung urgency. I, um, nakita na ho natin yung urgency, yung urgent need um, for change and for 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 this important thing to happen na ngayon nagkakaisa ho tayo and that we are we are actually starting to fight um historical revisionism um the violence on history and yung yung matagal na hong othering na nangyayari ho sa atin um sa ating bansa sa ating history and that's why you see in this political campaign lalo na um kung nakita niyo ho yung mga um rallies ni Lenny na ordinary people are now finding their voices. And then, nandun na rin ho, nabibigyan na ho sila ng plataforma to really speak out. And that is why um, I think kailangan ho natin pagpatuloy ho natin itong mga discussions na ito. Um, because as our title um, says it, right? Confronting our past, deciding our present, and, and maybe also deciding and walking towards our future. So, meron pa ho ba tayong ibang mga comments ho? Yeah, yeah or, I think we should end dahil, um, yes. dahil maganda yung uh, simula lang ito ng pag-uusap 
and nandito tayo sa virtual studio natin uh, ilabas natin ang usapan sa pamara- pamamaraan ng pag-imbita ng mga nagkomentaryo uh, doon sa Facebook uh, yes. page. Uh, nakita ko si Dr. Al. I remember now sa MAG, uh, Medical Action Group. Uh, I think you were one of my sources when I was uh, working as a journalist, as a kid, a young journalist. And my, my statement siya, um, uh, Jojel, if you don't mind putting it up again, Salamat. Ayon. Uh, sabi ni Dr. Ao, beautiful and enlightening conversations, many issues and questions raised for further reflections for a be- beautiful for a better future. We need more conversations like this. Thanks to organizers and speakers. Um, marami salamat, Dr. Ao. Um, we won't exist just by ourselves, and I hope. Uh, ipagpatuloy natin ang pagtanong, ang pag-uusap at pagkilos. Maraming salamat po. Bye-bye. <laughs> Maraming salamat. Thank you so much for attending and joining us. Salamat. Salamat sa mga dumaan. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you po sa inyo. Good morning. Good afternoon. Salamat po sa inyo. Okay, bye-bye to our viewers.